Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus, presenting Ted Lasso, which has won back-to-back Emmys for Outstanding Comedy Series. At the end of this podcast, you can hear comments from Ted Lasso actors Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple. Ted Lasso is streaming on Apple TV Plus. Hi, this is Larry Mantle, and I'm excited to invite you to LA's Night at Dodger Stadium on June 23rd. Get your pair of tickets by supporting all the programming you value from LA's. Donate now at LA's.com slash Dodgers. Thank you. LA's Studios. From Elias Studios, this is How to LA. I'm Brian De Los Santos. Today, I've got something a little different for you. I want to talk to you about the life and legacy of Gloria Molina. Gloria was the definition of a trailblazer. The first Latina elected to the State Assembly, the Los Angeles City Council, and the LA County Board of Supervisors. She represented so much for the Latino community and Los Angeles as a whole. She fought against environmental injustice in East LA, for women who underwent unauthorized sterilization at the county hospital. But she was an artist too, a quilter, and founded Telas, a stitching group in East LA. She also helped found La Plaza de Cultura y Artes in downtown. She passed away last Sunday after a battle with cancer. On Wednesday, I went to an event at La Plaza. And I want to tell you about it because, honestly, if you live in L.A., I feel like you should visit, too. We know Supervisor Molina was a trailblazer, the first Latina in many halls of government. She once said, I'm here at Plaza de la Cultura y Artes in downtown L.A., right next to Olvera Street. And we're here to see the unveiling of a quilt that's going to be honoring Gloria Molina and an ofrenda and a little bit of an exhibition. I invite people to visit us at La Plaza and pay tribute to this trailblazer by completing the square and being part of the community cult of hope. There's this press event with a lot of cameras rolling, photographs being taken, supervisors, city leaders, and community members who became friends with Gloria Molina. You don't become the first you don't get called a trailblazer because you're a shrinking violet. And as we were recording the event, a few people came up to us and we started talking about Gloria's legacy and how her work outside of politics is still palpable here in LA. I did not know much about her politics. I knew her personally. I have a whole different perspective on her. I'm just amazed that the person I traveled with and grew up with turned out to be a supernova. My name is Patricia Lopez, Patty Lopez. Currently live in Pico Rivera in my childhood home, a few blocks from Gloria's childhood home. I was with her on Sunday. It was a beautiful thing. She said, I have no regrets. I've had a beautiful life beyond my wildest imagination. And there's nobody like her. Absolutely no one like her. I'm hearing things about her today that I didn't even know. And I know her really well. Teaching the supervisor how to make tamales. Oh man, that's pretty amazing. And Glory was an excellent cook. Just the best. Her capriotada was to die for. We both started sewing when we were young, at, sort of out of like we love clothing, but both of us came from households with limited means. That's how we became friends, actually. We would share patterns, make clothing for ourselves. Then we took up sewing as adults in the quilting world. You know, quilting is an American art developed with the Amish, Gloria turned that American art into Latina American art. We were invited to a national quilt show called Road to California. We all made different patterns and this was Gloria's bridging Mexico and the U.S. 
The idea was we are connected to our Mexican heritage. One side sort of depicts where she lived in Mount Washington for many, many years. And the other side is Mexico City, where we were invited a number of times as quilters to present our work. As you can see, she loved purple. She put in all the flowers, representative of Mexico, calla lilies, birds of paradise, and she's got angel wings on a heart because we have such a love for the influence in our quilting world of our Latina roots. That was a glorious thing. And I don't know if you can sense it, but can you feel the love? What an honor to know somebody like that, no? We'll be right back. Hi, it's Nick Roman. Join us June 23rd for LA is Night at Dodger Stadium. Donate to LA is today and select tickets to the ball game as your thank you gift. Give now at LAist.com slash Dodgers. Thanks and see you at the ballpark. Hi, I'm Caitlin Hernandez, the lead reporter for LA's new project, Queer LA. As a queer and non-binary journalist, I know LGBTQ plus news is tough lately, which is why we're flipping the script. Our good stories need to be told as much as the hard ones. Through Queer LA, I'm highlighting the joys of being in the community and practical ways to get more involved. Whether you're trans or have friends who are gay, this is your space to connect. All on the LA Report and LAist.com slash Queer LA. You can give us your first, last name, and then Telas. Sure. My name is Betty Palomino, and we're at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes in Los Angeles. I'm part of Telas, which is Gloria's quilt group. The acronym stands for the East LA Stitchers. So when the news broke about Gloria's death, um, I had a friend who actually wrote about Telas, and it was this beautiful feature story that we had on Elias, and I tweeted it out. Then I had a friend write back, and she lives in Texas, Um, She wrote back, this is so sad. I know her more as a quilter, which are stunning works of art. How did I not know the rest? So essentially saying like she didn't know she was a supervisor maybe and her historic journey in politics. She knew her specifically as a quilter. And now that I see her works of art, they're amazing. What's your reaction when you hear someone say like, I didn't know much about her political history, but more of her legacy as a quilter. And this is someone uh, across the country. You know, I do understand that because even seeing Gloria on a regular basis and seeing her in that type of environment, in an artistic environment, a quilt environment, she was very humble. She never spoke about her accomplishments. I grew up in her district, and I always remember my abuela making sure she voted for Gloria Molina. She was a Latina. She was out there doing it. But really, I also know her as a quilter. She really worked tirelessly. Every month, she made sure that it was important for us to like build our skills and really make sure that everything that we did had some kind of Latino flair about it. So I can understand because she has really made a mark in the quilting world. You know, your friends in Texas, she's heard of Telas, you know, were known internationally. Who would have thought this little group of Latinas from East LA that quilt would be showing a quilt in Australia, in France? She really put us on the map. Sometimes when you see someone every day, you forget who they are, you know? And we saw her so often, I talked to her so often, you know, you tend to forget like that who she is, you know? And when I saw like all these accomplishments that she had, I thought, here's this woman who accomplished things for millions, literally millions of people in Los Angeles. And she cares whether or not I cut straight. I know Gloria, just just because I've always been enamored with journalism, so I was always reading the LA Times, and her, so her name would pop up. But even just like as a community leader that she was, her name was always around Latinos. Like she leaves behind a big legacy as a first and a trailblazer for our communities. How does that make you feel as a fellow Latina in LA? I don't want to say I'm not unique, but she made everybody feel like they were unique. You know, she really did. She was patient. She was encouraging to everyone. Honestly, I, it was very difficult for me to be here today just because I'm, you know, I feel very emotional. It's been a very difficult time. And I thought, what would Gloria want me to do? Gloria would be like, get it together. Because Gloria was always so like businesslike and, and so professional with everything. I was like, I need to get it together and pull through in honor of Gloria. Looking around this space at La Plaza, you can really feel Gloria's influence. As an artist, as a community builder, it's hard to imagine not really having a space like this in LA. 
But spaces like these are kind of rare. And I think that's what makes La Plaza so special to me. I mean, you know, Los Angeles, 51% are Latino, and yet we don't see ourselves in everything. At La Plaza, there's no question you're going to have a connection. And that was very much Gloria's fingerprint. My name is Leticia Buckley. I am the CEO of La Plaza de Cultura y Artes in downtown LA. So as we were talking about coming here and why we wanted to highlight Plaza in our story is because it is palpable. You can walk by La Placita Olvera. And so people can check out what is this. It's an event space. It is an exhibition. It's part of the LA fabric. And Gloria founded this space. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. So why it's so important. I think of La Plaza as, I mean, we're a museum, but we're really a cultural hub a place where community can come together to celebrate, to grieve, learn art, dance salsa. You can have an opportunity to just gather with other people. And you know, Supervisor Molina, Gloria Molina, when she envisioned this place, that's what she envisioned. I mean, she had said to me at one point, every major metropolis in this country has a history museum, but Los Angeles didn't. And the reality is you can't have Los Angeles history without talking about Latinos. And so La Plaza was very much about telling and preserving those stories of Mexicans and Mexican-Americans and just making sure that people learn the history but also can see themselves. This is the kind of place that you can come here with your abuelita or with your tias, right, or with your kids. Can you give us a little bit of history of how Gloria's work came and founded this place? For her, it was very important that Los Angeles have a museum where people can come and learn about the history of Los Angeles. Leveraging her position of power for good said, we're gonna make this place happen. We have a permanent exhibit called LA Starts Here, which is literally that, the history of Los Angeles over the last, you know, four or 500 years. And so we start with the Carvalheño Tongua, the first peoples of this land, moving into and telling the stories of Spanish colonization and the story of Pio Pico, who was the first Afro-Latino governor the transition from Mexico to the United States and becoming Californios, all stories that are not told in school. So we bring in young kids through school visits. We, you know, folks walk through with our tour guides, come here on a Friday night and you'll see the multi-generational diverse audiences that are walking through our doors. A hundred percent believe that that is the best way in which we honor her legacy. And again, I am deeply grateful to Gloria Molina for having that vision and the perseverance to make sure it happened. For me, it's interesting to see how much one person influenced a huge space in Los Angeles. I'm not just talking about the politics and the community building and the art that she created. I'm talking about Gloria's impact on people. New women who go to this Della's group that she helped create the first and second graders who come into the museum i honestly feel like i learned so much about ellie's history just by being here and if you've never been maybe now is a good time to do it they're open from noon to 5 p.m and there's going to be a special altar honoring gloria through this sunday we've got gloria's full bio on elias.com slash how to la go check it out there okay y'all thanks so much for listening we'll be back with you next week this episode was produced by Evan Jacoby. Our other producers are Megan Botel and Victoria Alejandro. Chris Farias is our social media producer. Erica Washington writes our newsletter. Our engineer is Hasmik Pagosian. Megan Larson is our executive producer. And I'm your host, Brian De Los Santos. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus, presenting Ted Lasso. Here's Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca Walton. She became the owner of the AFC Richmond Football Club after her divorce from Rupert. Rupert's the love of her life. And she'll have a stronger day and then a weaker day. And it's because she had wanted that with him, and he chose. She cannot have Rupert steaming out in front She cannot have it. And there's even a point where she goes to Ted's room and says, 
you know we have to win this. Like, trying to be cool about it, but make sure we do. And Ted, in his usual way of saying, look, you've already won because you've become a stronger person and seen the light. And she's like, yeah, 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 beat them. Juno Temple plays Healy Jones, a model turned public relations consultant for the team. In season three, she gets a girlfriend, her PR firm's financial backer, Jack. Throughout all the seasons, it's very clear that Keely is bisexual and has spent a lot of time hitting on Rebecca. <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to be a fun one to play out because it's cool to have her, you know, have a romance with a woman that's another strong, independent woman and getting all this done herself. I think they're going to definitely feel a lot for a lot of the different characters. Rebecca's storyline, Nate's storyline, Ted's storyline, Roy, Jamie, like all these characters that are still going through these really... Comp Sam, Christo, and also Zava coming in and kind of shaking everything up for a minute. I just hope as an actor that I bring what they want from me, you know, because I think Keely's a really precious character. I love her a lot. She's taught me a lot about being kinder to myself. I'm definitely my own worst enemy, and I think she's somebody that really helps people to see the best sides of themselves. That's Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple from the Emmy-winning Apple TV Plus original comedy series, Ted Lasso. Ma, pa, te presento a mi novia Luna. Hola, mucho gusto. Eric Galindo, co-host of Wild here, and this season, I'm going to tell you a fictional love story. The type of story that feels like a movie. It was inspired by my life. The woman I was dating, off and on again for a minute, comes to me and says she wants to move to Milwaukee. You're looking at the newest anchor for YWCC News, baby! I'm going to be the face of Milwaukee's leading news source. It was a road trip adventure across America. I was steeped in love and in one of the most confusing relationships of my life. This is a Southeast LA rom-com. It's the kind of fictional audio drama that forces you to confront parts of yourself. From LA Studios, listen to Wild Season 2, I Think I'm Falling in Love. Catch the new season on NPR One, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts.